Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I'm here at the Other Machine Company with Martine Neider, who is uh, part of a team that's built, uh, well, a tabletop mill. It's pretty neat. Yeah, this is the other mill. It is a very small three-axis mill. It's light, it's portable, it's relatively inexpensive. We're really excited about it. I have a desktop 3D printer. Why would I want a tabletop mill? Mills and 3D printers are kind of the perfect team. Um, 3D printers can make any shape you can dream up, but they're really only gonna make it out of one or two materials. So 3D printers you print with a couple of different kinds of plastic. Uh, with the mill, what kind of materials can you cut from? You can cut from anything that is softer than steel, basically. So you can cut wow. aluminum, you can cut brass, you can cut copper. We really love machining wax. And with machining wax, you can make molds for all sorts of things. We've been doing mostly food molds because we're nerds, but um, we're also really excited about jewelry molds, doing silver molds, lost wax casting. And the thing this was really designed for was making printed circuit boards. Okay, so hold on, you said you're making food molds. Does that mean you're carving out a design in the machining wax and then dumping chocolate or jello or whatever? Um, we're cutting a positive out of the machining wax and then we're making a mold out of silicone, food grade silicone. That seems a lot safer. So how do you make a printed circuit board with a mill? I've never done this before. A printed circuit board is just a piece of copper on some substrate. So usually that's fiberglass, we use phenolic, and you take everything off the surface except for the line of the circuit. So, so you start with a whole bunch of copper and you cut it down to the, the places that you want the circuits. And, and you would do this because you're designing your own, say, Arduino board or something like that. And, and what's the benefit of doing it in your own office versus shipping it off to China or something like that? The difference is a week, possibly two weeks of time, depending where you're getting your PCB boards from. It makes printed circuit boards in five to 10 minutes, depending on how accurate and what size that board is. Okay, so Martine, this, this looks a, very familiar to me as a guy who spent a lot of time with 3D printers. Yeah, it actually looks quite a bit like the cupcake, mostly because they're both small boxes. Mm -hmm. You know, they're both three axis machines. So in this one, the platform is the Y and the tool head moves, moves on the X. Back, back and forth, and you've got your spindle head moving up and down right here. And it's screw drives for everything, it looks like. It's all stepper motors and screw drives. Let's walk through the, the cutting tool, because this is new for me. You can use all Dremel tools, you can use all Ford and Flex shaft tools. That means you're using drill bits, you're also be able to use grinding wheels or grinding cones, anything like that. So one of the other things that's neat about the other mill is everything that's not assembled motors and, and stuff like that, you're building in-house, right? Yeah, we're building everything in-house. The whole spindle head gets built in-house and the frame gets built in-house. The frame is made of HDPE mm -hmm. and we use just a plain 2.5D router to do that. It's a pretty big one, which means we can do lots of frames at once. And it's just locked in with a couple of screws. So rather than the old, like if you build a cupcake, then you, you remember the old you know, slot and, and nut design. Is, what's the benefit of using plastic? The benefit of using plastic is that it's more rigid and it doesn't deform over time. Um, that's huge, actually, particularly if you want to do something as precise as circuit boards and you want to be able to do them reliably for a long period of time. To do circuit boards, you need to be precise. How precise can the machine do? So the machine does 10 mil trace in space, um, which means it can hold a straight line that's um, 10 mil thick. And then you're also doing machining for some of the metal parts in the, in the other mill downstairs too, right? Yeah, so we machine this guy, which is the spindle head, and this guy, which is a vacuum attachment. The vacuum attachment is made on a water jet, and the spindle head, we have a nice five axis vertical milling machine downstairs that makes these. So you guys are based in other lab right now. Can you tell, I, I, I didn't know that this existed. It's a really neat place. We've seen a ton of cool projects as we've walked through here. Like what exactly is other lab and, and, and how did you guys do this in a relative, such a short period of time? So other lab is the brainchild of Saul Griffith. It is sort of like an incubator, except instead of having projects come from outside, we create the projects here and go looking for funding which means that we can have a few kind of weird off the wall projects going at any one time that don't have funding, which is great. And, and why consumer CNC mills? This is a product, this is a category I didn't know existed and I don't think really did exist until, until you guys launched the Kickstarter, yeah. Um, what's the application for normal people for a CNC mill? So we're interested in CNC, consumer CNC hardware in general. Um, the mill is just our first product. We intend to make a bunch of different CNC machines. The reason we're interested in the mill is because it allows you to do all sorts of 3D objects out of a very wide range of material with high precision. 
And if you're working with machining wax, it's not an expensive material, right? No, it's very, very inexpensive. Our bars of machining wax we get from McMaster Car, which is probably the most expensive place you can buy anything for about four bucks. And so the other part about the CNC stuff that's tricky is the software side. And, and uh, like, what have you guys done to make the software easier to use? So CAM software is this whole crazy thing that most people who get interested in machining don't know exists. And so you learn SolidWorks, you learn how to make a 3D part, and then suddenly everybody's like, oh, well, you need to use this incredibly difficult piece of software to get it onto the large machine, which is going to make your product, whatever it is. So we've created a piece of software called OtherCam, and OtherCam is a visual software. Most CAM software is run basically through G-Code, and G-Code is the machining code that runs all CNC machines. And in this case, we basically show you a picture of what you've put into the machine in the mill itself, and then as it's cutting out, what's happening in reality is happening on the screen. So if something wrong is happening on screen, something wrong is happening in your machine, which means you can do a full simulation before you go ahead and cut. And it'll tell you if you're gonna hit a place where you do something bad to your, to your model. Exactly. Currently it runs Eagle BRD files and SVGs. Okay. Um, so basically those are board files and illustrator files. Um, so currently it's running 2D files. This fall it will get Gerber, STL, OBJ, and DXF. Okay, so the other mill, you, your Kickstarter is closed. How can people get the machine if they want to buy it now? And what does it cost? Okay, so our Kickstarter is closed and we are concentrating on making our first batch. So we are not quite ready to start taking pre-orders for our next batch. Um, probably in four to six weeks, um, we will start taking pre-orders and you can go to our website, which currently is otherfab.com, but we're changing our name to Other Machine Company. So it will be othermachine.co and sign up to order there. In the meantime, you can um, email info at otherfab.com and I'll put you on the pre-order notification list. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Martine. Uh, for Tested, I'm Will. We'll see you guys later. Bye.